Good morning from Cape Town. We're on our way for our first full day of sightseeing and fun, but first a quick stop in the Bokop area. A little bit of conversation, a little bit of relaxation. Across the sea, city to city, come by with me. Tell me when you're ready, ready to leave with my cruising family. Across the skies and sea, come and bow with me, yeah. What you waiting for? Just step out the door and explore. Are you ready to bow with me and this cruising family? My cruising family. So they are the only two Nobel Prize winners that lived in the same street in Soweto. Oh wow. <laughs> So, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, he headed up the struggle via the church. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Nelson Mandela was imprisoned yeah. in the 20s. The charge was treason. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> but he came out, treason. you know, being liberated in his mind. He was stronger than you meant Yes. He understood the power of forgiveness yeah. and harboring bitterness. And he was seen as the father of the nation, and as a father, you can't have bitterness and resentment. Right. You can't lead a family. Right. So his vision was different, but he came out um, a better person. Yeah. New mindset, new focus. So now we're coming into the city center. Table Mountain is slightly covered. We might have to do that later on today. Okay. Um, on the way back. Yeah. This is just a passing plan, and we'll be there later on. Spreading the tablecloth. <laughs> the cloth is there. So all these flags, but these are all bars, um, pubs, you know, little discos, and this comes alive at night. And look, we're in Burger King. Burger King. There's a Burger King. Yeah, for two dollars <laughs> you get a meal. After a nice drive and chat with Brad, our tour guide from Cape Trio Tours, we're now pulling into the Bocap area to meet up with our photographer, Natalie, from Flytographer. If you've been subscribed for some time or have been following my cruising family on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, you will likely already know that I love taking pictures, especially during family vacations. Bocap Deli. Let's find Bocap Deli. It's my understanding that these brightly colored homes in Bocap were all once white. That was when properties were being leased to slaves who weren't at the time allowed to own property, but when home ownership became allowed, they painted their homes in bright, vibrant colors. They could not touch you as a protester if you stood on the steps. Okay. So everyone ran to the church. Wow. And you'd sit there for a whole day until the cops, you know, gave up. Wow. But this was um, a strategic church during the struggle. I grew up hearing about Archbishop Desmond Tutu a lot while I was in Jamaica. So this is... Uh, wow. Yeah, no, he was a stalwart, you know, he was... Yeah. Uh, and of course, next door, you've got the crypt, that's a jazz club. Oh! <laughs> so just underneath the church, you've got the crypt. Thousands were crammed and kept um, when the Dutch first arrived and they brought slaves and um, every one of my friends have had one surname of the month or the other. Really? January, February, March, April. Today, especially in the colored communities, mm -hmm. uh, mainly colored communities, um, you would have the, the surname of the, the month. The, the months, yeah. Wow. So this is where slaves stood on. This is where they were kind of kept and okay. sold and traded. And wow. Since we had an early photo shoot and didn't have breakfast at the hotel, Brad is taking us to one of the best coffee houses in Cape Town. This is probably the best coffee house in Cape Town. Truth Coffee. This is really nice. Cotado is one is to one. So the amount of milk and coffee in the cup is equal. Flat white that's one is to three. Very similar to cappuccino. So we don't do cappuccino, we do the flat white. And lastly, a latte, one is to five. It has more milk. And it also comes in a slightly bigger cup than all the other options. Okay. So I tell you, will choose which coffee bean you want me to use to prepare your coffee. Okay. At the bottom there, everything is cold and has coffee in it. We also do mocha, which is a mixture of hot chocolate and coffee. And we do hot chocolate. Okay. We also have baby chinos as well as like hot chocolate, but in a smaller cup. So with the coffee beans, if I could just go into depth with that, mm -hmm. the resurrection bean, it's a chocolatey, nutty flavored bean. It's 
the most acidic, acidic amongst all those beans and it goes really well with anything that has milk, the deep dark and twisted bean. That's more of a strong old coffee. It's a dark roast, um, so if you like strong coffee, then the deep dark and twisted is a really good it's good. And then lastly, the black honey bean is the most sweetest bean. It has a fruity taste to it. And also since you don't add any sugars, Mommy's about to take a picture of her coffee yes. before she drinks it. And that's a good size cup. That's a good size cup. Yeah. Slow down the footage, pause if you'd like to take a look at this menu and let us know in the comments what you think you would order here. The menu is extensive and our waitress is so wonderful. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> we did not expect that, nor ask for it. Very observant. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. This place, Truth Coffee, is truly a gem. It says happy belated birthday. birthday. <laughs> we didn't expect that. You're the best. Thank you. Who told you? Thank you. To be Brad. <laughs> a little birdie did it. A little birdie. All right, first sip. Can you believe that this girl here, who usually adds a bunch of sugar to coffee, is enjoying a latte with no sugar needed? This latte is really good. Remember our waitress mentioned a tiny hot chocolate? Well, LJ is enjoying one of those and a deconstructed burger he gets to put together himself. AJ loves the bacon and fries here. All of us are raving about Truth Coffee, okay? Now back to the tour van with the additional bacon in hand that AJ ordered for the road. Now this is part of the Atlantic seaboard. So I'm just coming to chill, relax, walk, uh -huh. bring the dogs. Uh -huh. So because of the, the small space, um, it was just, the logical idea was to build apartments. Right. But these are massive apartments. So one apartment is the size of a huge house. We must stop at Maiden's Cove, and that just gives such a beautiful um, view of Table Mountain and um, a lion's head. Got it. Look at this. I could sit here and relax all day. The camera doesn't do this justice. Beautiful is an understatement. After taking in those gorgeous views at Maiden's Cove, we are now heading to Chapman's Peak, which is famous for jaw-dropping views of coastal Cape Town. According to chapmanspeakdrive.co.za, Chapman's Peak Drive winds its way between Nordic and Hoot Bay on the Atlantic coast of the southwestern tip of South Africa. So the Germans love Cape Town. Yeah. And of course, Namibia, is the second largest German community outside of Germany. Okay. And then Durban has got the second largest Indian community outside of India. Wow, okay. Interesting. Yeah, for real, that's... <laughs> Just so you know, most of the locations we're visiting today are places that I researched and listed before this trip as must-do items. Shout out to my fellow travel content creator, Carlene from See It With Sea, who assured me that many of the things I want to do while in Cape Town can be done even in a day. Carlene has been to Cape Town a bunch of times and I'm thankful I was able to chat with her when preparing for this trip. Of course, shout out also to Granwell from Cape Trio Tours and Brad, our tour guide, for bringing my list of must-do items to life. We are now on our way to get what we hear is some of the best ice cream with good natural ingredients, but wow, man, we have to pull over and pause to take in more scenery along the way. There are amazing views all around coastal Cape Town. Okay, so on to Nordic Farm Village for ice cream. And yes, that says Kristen's Kick-Ass Ice Cream. Oh, wow. good. Thank you. Good. You can see the camera also. Camera for you. Oh, a camera for me! Yeah. <laughs> ah! You can also zoom in. It zooms? Yeah. I'm after a brief walk around the farm village, we are heading to our next must-see item while in Cape Town, Boulders Beach. Go ahead and comment below if you know what Boulders Beach is famous for, and if you don't yet know, you'll see in a few seconds. So the penguins, let's go. Check the one. They're not funny. 
whatsoever. Over there, you see them like talking yeah. to each other behind that see, rock. If, if you watch them, watch closely. They got a print on the chest. That's their fingerprint. Oh wow. We had to come see the African penguins. I am in awe that there are penguins in South Africa. taking a quick walk down to this public beach area just to see what it's like. Quick stop here at Boulders Beach, the public area at Boulders Beach. And now we're heading up to our van, our tour van, to make one more major stop before we get back to the hotel. This next must-do item while in Cape Town is one of the most popular, and while we drive, we are having a whole lot of conversation with Brad. So in Cape Town, you can get an amazing house uh, for $300,000. Thinking of moving to Cape Town yet? Well, we are now online for the Table Mountain Aerial Cableway, and LJ is not happy about the thought of going up the mountain in a cable car. Don't, don't want to go on this. Don't want to go on this attraction. Why not? Have I ever had you do something that hurt you? No. Have I ever put you in danger? No. So why don't you want to do this one? Mommy research. Because it's this. height! Because it's height! It's height, but you went higher than I did at um where was the place we went? Chapman's Peak? You climbed up higher with daddy than I did. Well it's the car! It's heavier! It can fall down in the air. The cable car? No, no, no. No, baby, the cable car is not falling. Anywho, some folks in Cape Town choose to hike up Table Mountain, but I know that is not our portion, so I'm really hoping that LJ will take some deep breaths and be calm for this. While online to get to the cable car, our tour guide Brad named LJ Braveheart for this activity and told him and AJ that there are limited seats in the middle of the cable car where they can sit and not feel the motion of the cable car. Brad for the win. <laughs> Oh, is it that side? You can face the mountain. Yeah, Lana and I will face the mountain. Yeah. Well, it's going to lead us to the next spot. I'm filming it. This is hot in this place. Oh. So I take tangents, let's step inside, let's move around the cable car as you enter, folks. Let's move around. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Table Mountain Aerial Cableway. As we go up, the floor will be rotating, so kindly step away from the sides and let go of all silver handbars. Thank you and enjoy. Um, what? The floor is rotating? Spinning? Okay, somehow in my research, I missed the part that the floor of the cable car rotates as it goes up and down the mountain. All right, that's what Brad meant about not feeling motion. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was thinking not feeling it go up or down, but I just, I didn't get that, y'all. Okay, trying not to freak out while I hold this camera to share these amazing views with y'all. All right, Lord Jesus, help us. There are open windows along the side of the cable car so you can see more clearly in certain spots as the floor rotates. This is exhilarating, gorgeous, and freaky all at the same time. Comment below if you have been in or would ride this cable car. Remember, the other option is to hike or not go up this mountain, and we are going up this mountain, okay? You did it, Landon. We did it, right, together? Okay, so if anyone else has vertigo like I do and you wonder if you can take the cable car up, you can. I did it, I survived, I'm still here. 
What I will say is be prepared for the floor moving beneath you, okay? That could be a little scary. And here, as we are at the mountain, we're walking up the steps to one of the various viewpoints. This could also be scary, but you can pick which viewpoint you wanna go. How high, you could be mid-level, you could stay low, you can go up higher. You see Lion's Head? Where? Right there where the paraglider is going, that's Lion's Head. And see? Okay. Capturing moments, especially moments with the fam. My fam, one of my favorite things in the world to do. You just gave us a little spiel downstairs about why you were crying and fussing. What was that about? Uh, that was the fact I didn't want to go on this ride. You didn't want to go on this ride, you called it? How was it? How has it been? It's, it's been good, I It's guess. been good. What about if another little kid who's nine years old, who has some level of affair of heights, wants to go on this but just is too afraid or they think they're too afraid? What would you tell that little kid? Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Is there anything, any, any tips for sitting in the cable car? Where did you sit? Well, I, well, I sit, well, I sit in the chair, in the chair that doesn't move. Right would, in the middle, right? Yes, but I still move, so there's, there, so there's no point going on that. It, just, it is, because the floor where I was standing circled around, so your floor wasn't moving, so that was good. I guess. <laughs> All right, back to the cable car. We're back online for the tram, the cable car, and that's Cam's Bay, which we drove by earlier. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. The floor you are standing on is going to be rotating. I do ask that you step away from the sides, let go of the silver handbars, have your parachutes ready. <laughs> and enjoy the ride. I won't edit this part at all, so you can get a real feel, well, as real a feel as possible through this video, for how the floor in the cable car rotates. And you can see the wind coming through. If you can see wind, you know what I mean. You see the effects of the wind coming through the open windows as well. Remember, I am standing still, and the floor of the cable car is rotating to give these gorgeous, gorgeous views.
This right here is how I make it. So after a quick stop at the shop, because you know, just like any other major attraction, you exit through a shop, we picked up a few items, a few souvenirs, and now we're heading back to meet Brad. I gotta pay attention because there are lots of steps here. Bye, Table Mountain! That was a good experience. Well done, guys. I know it was a big one. Yes! Day. It was what wonderful. You, deliver? you delivered. Thank you, Brad. Afro Jam. Afro Jam. Have some fun. Thank you. On the way back to our hotel, let's visit Afro Gems. Although this is clearly a jewelry shop, there are some small trinkets that may also be of interest. I had high hopes of purchasing jewelry here, but didn't. They have some really nice pieces though, and I did purchase two small purses. Back to our hotel. Wow, that was nice. Bless you guys. After a full day out, we are now ready to enjoy our hotel for a little bit. Let us know in the comments what would you do next? Sleep? Eat? Watch TV? Find out where the party is tonight? Or something else? Guess what we're doing next? Eating, of course! Oh! We're at the same table! She has you want to sit on the other side. No, this is good. Now I'm gonna call this our table. You see? Look who you're all like here. You have your own you have your own lady. Oh Lord have mercy. No, no. No. Alan is here doing the conversions of the cost of this food from Rand to US. Oh, chicken strips, I don't know. Okay, yeah, right here. And the prices are very reasonable. So the chicken strips is $2.22 in US money. Mm -hmm. What can you get for $2.22 at a sit down restaurant in America? Especially when we live in New York. This is a great deal and great food. What is the most expensive meal of what we all just ordered um, from this menu? And let's see the conversion. The most expensive meal would be mommy's meal. The Sticky Jack Daniel barbecue ribs, 230 rand. Conversion. So what? Converting it to? American dollars. Okay. Divided by US 18. dollars. So that's the rough estimate, the most expensive meal that we've ordered for this sit down approximately, dinner. Approximately $13. Pretty good in our estimation, and we live in New York, so. Okay, so the most expensive meal on the menu overall. None of us ordered it, but as you can see, it's the whiskey and pepper filet, and it's 295 rand. So Alan's gonna do the conversion from rand to USD on the most expensive menu item for dinner that we can see at this restaurant and the most expensive one converts to $16 and if you want to round up 40 cents USD. That's pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. Our first load shedding experience in Cape Town. So the power just went out as we sat here at the restaurant. As you can see, it's dark. And this is what happens in Cape Town from time to time. It's called load shedding. And there's a generator here at our hotel so the lights are coming back on. And the good thing is at the front desk, there's a list of times for when the load shedding is expected each day. Um, I didn't actually check the list today because I wasn't sure what time we'd be in and out and we had a full day, but load shedding happened. Just be prepared in Cape Town that load shedding will happen. This grandma's barbecue ribs, sticky Jack, sticky Daniels. Jack Daniels barbecue ribs. We oh, both have, have butter curry chicken. Ready? Oh yes, the roti. Yes. Thank you so much. Yum. Yes, sir. Margarita pizza. And you got the same thing, right? You didn't yeah. I'm on the phone plan again. Hey, sorry. Mm. This is really good. This roti looks kind of wet. Oh yeah. Was yours wet yesterday? Yes. 
Okay, so the New Yorker in me totally appreciates the fresh garlic and fresh red peppers. You know, like at the pizza shops in New York, you get powdery garlic in the little canister to shake on your pizza, and you'll get the, in the same canister, or similar canister, you'll get the red pepper flakes to shake on a pizza. Who needs flakes and dried garlic when you got the fresh stuff? I think that Aunt Tequila, when she comes in October, mm -hmm. she should pick Brad to be her tour guide, because he, he's really funny. Yeah, he was really good. He was good with you guys. Mm -hmm. Do you think he was good too? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, see, and we, and, and yes. Yes. He helped Blanon get over his fear height. Yes. Yeah, but you did well in the cable you car. Did very well in the cable car, buddy. We're fans very of Brad. Of Definitely you. fans of Brad in Cape Trio tours. I am so proud of you. We can't say it enough. We are so thankful for Cape Trio Tours. Granwell, who was in communication with me consistently before we actually arrived in Cape Town and when we planned out this whole trip. And Brad, who's been here with us. Granwell's out of town and Brad is here to fill in and can't be more pleased. Like, this has been amazing. Thank you, my dear Alan. Welcome. Does this room come with a butler? Okay, yeah, no, it yes, doesn't. It does. <laughs> well, well, what do we have here? An upgrade? And we still technically have one of the rooms on the second floor. But as of tonight, the five of us are staying here. Sweet tour coming soon. After dinner, we upgraded our room. So good night from our King Loft suite at the Doubletree by Hilton, Cape Town, Upper East Side. Thank you for rocking with us for this first full day in Cape Town, South Africa. We hope you enjoyed this vlog and we hope you stick around and see what we get into next vlog. Have a wonderful day. My cruising family